Today in the Choke Slam Wrestling Report, we are going to be going through WrestleMania 40, 40 Fallout. And we're going to be talking about that. Also, we're going to be talking about that all in footage. I think that was bigger than WrestleMania Fallout, but we're going to be talking about that. What is this going to be for AEW? And was this a good move? And we're going to be talking about that and much more on the Choke Slam Wrestling Report. Let's get this. Is the moment we've all been waiting for, for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble! Welcome to another episode of the Chokesland Wrestling Report. I am your host, the Ultimate One, and we're going to jump right on this because last week I did my podcast early, because the earlier during the week, because it was WrestleMania week, and I did not want to do my podcast during WrestleMania night one and two because I knew nobody was going to be listening to it because everybody was all into the WrestleMania stuff. Now, I got to see both nights of WrestleMania. Night one was not that great. The Usos um, match between each other was horrible. Probably one of the worst brother versus brother match I ever seen. I mean, there was nothing there. There was They, they didn't build it like they were supposed to, and it was, just, it was just flat. It fell flat. I mean, the match of the night, of course, was the um, the tag team between The Rock, Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins and Cody Rhodes. That was a good match. Of course, my girl, Mommy, defended her world title against Becky Lynch, even though Becky Lynch had an 104 degrees um, a fever, I think, the day before she had it. And, I mean, I got to give her credit. She was in that ring, but Mommy kept the belt. Um, Gunter losing his intercontinental belt, I Kind of was not too happy. It had to be Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn had his moment last last year when he won the tag team belts while with Loma Kevin Owens against the Uso, which was I mean to me was tag team match of the year. Um, so you know I wasn't too happy with that, but at the same time I'm looking at now Gunter will be in the world title picture in Raw, you know, because uh, Cody is in now in SmackDown. Um. You know, so that was cool. And I mean, the fallout out of all that, we really didn't get to see anything from there with exception of, I might as well bring it up now because last night, the what we saw on SmackDown was Solo Sokoa pretty much taking over the bloodline last night. Uh, and that's the fallout from the whole Roman Reigns losing the belt to Cody Rhodes on night two. Pretty much, it looks like Solo Sokol has taken over the bloodline. You know what I'm saying? And that is the fallout out of it. But the, not a big surprise to me because there was rumors going around that Tama Tonga was going to be part of the bloodline. I mean, to me, I said, well, you know, they're not really related, you know, um, because, uh, you know, uh, Tama Tonga is from the, the islands of Tonga. These are Samoans. Two different things. But... The history of, you know, of the Anoa family and Haku's family. They know each other for so many years. Rikishi teams up with Haku at one point and whatnot. And, you know, The Rock even said that he calls Haku his uncle. So, you know, they're all related there. But Tama Tonga joining the bloodline for this storyline that we saw on Friday Night SmackDown. And it looks like we're going to have... It's, it's going to be like the Bullet Club OG versus the main Bullet Club. I remember back in those days, 2018, with the whole, you know, the firing squad against the Bullet Club, um, which was Kenny Omega's elite, whatever it was. For pretty much, we're seeing this, but I think it's a better storyline. I mean, I was shocked when I saw uh, Solo Sokol take the phone away from Paul Heyman and just pretty much stepped on it when... When Roman, um, when Paul Heyman tried to call Roman Reigns, 
Now, where this is going to go, I don't know. Can we see that maybe out of that little pack, we could have The Rock leading that because he is the final boss. And, you know, let's go back to the whole thing with the final boss thing. As you saw, like, again, on night two, Roman Reigns lost the belt to uh, Cody. Finally, he lost the belt. But, again, I got to give – it's going to sound crazy because I was one of the guys who was always criticizing – Roman Reigns for not defending the belt. But at the same time, we found out that he's still dealing with the leukemia. Uh, he's taking some type of uh, medication or still dealing with the whole process with leukemia. So that's why you see him. He's not as jack as he was before. He looks a little slimmer. He looked it great in the ring. He wrestled two nights in a row, which I was very surprised because I kept saying through the whole podcast that he wasn't going to wrestle two nights in a row. I don't see it. But he did wrestle two nights in a row. He lost the belt. And, you know, as you saw the ending of the match, we saw, you know, Sosa Core getting involved. Jimmy Uso came in. Um, I think no, Sosa Core came in after Jimmy came, after Jimmy came in interfering uh, Jay. You know, put Jimmy through a table. So so called came in. John Cena came out because John Cena was taken out by so so called last year. Then The Rock came out. Now I was like, wow, these are all the guys at one point feuded. The Rock and Cena had their issues back in 2012, which was perfect. Now the Undertaker coming out was a surprise to me. I was like, why is The Rock and Undertaker? But we all found out this week that Steve Austin did not show up because the money was not good enough. They didn't come to an agreement for the money, but it should have been Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock because of their history. But instead, you know, um, Undertaker came out, which was pretty good. That match was pretty good. It was, I mean, I even had my daughter watching this. And my daughter's not a big wrestling fan like she used to when she was young, but she is a Cody Rowe fan. And w she was even watching. That's how exciting this match was, you know. But now we go to the fallout. What comes out of that? We saw Cody on Monday Night Raw. Uh, and this is one thing I, I, I have a problem with is that they took 47 minutes of Raw to do a promo. 47 minutes. 47 minutes. Okay. Between The Rock and Cody. Now, Cody deserved everything that he, that, that, that he got. He finally finished his story. But The Rock looks like he's going to come back and challenge Cody, we may get in WrestleMania next year. We may get in SummerSlam, but he gave Cody something, and we don't know what that what it is. Um, I think he kind of mentioned it last night. I don't remember what it was, but he, we pretty much are going to see Cody versus The Rock. We don't know if the championship is going to get involved, or maybe The Rock's going to defend his people's championship. We never know. We we don't know. So that whole fallout there was uh interesting because now when is he coming back but then again this leads to the whole thing with the whole bloodline thing is the rock going to be the one who's going to be the, he's the final boss and then we're probably going to see the rock versus roman rings in wrestlemania next year or somewhere this year because roman reign put something up a twitter he said aggrieved his loss now today's day one so is he coming back are we going to see the Usos reunite? And to top it off, there was a report going around on Sunday on WrestleMania Night 2 that Jacob Fatu has signed with WWE. And this came from, I believe, was uh, Alex Kazarian, whatever his name is, as one of those dirt sheet guys, that he was going around saying that he had signed with WWE. Or not. He even pulled out out of the GCW show this past weekend. So is he he is he one of the the, the third member of the new bloodline led by Solo Sokoa? We might see that. We might see a six man coming up. So you know, as far as the uh the very um which I'm very proud of was Damian Priest winning or cashing in his money in the bank briefcase finally. He caught uh, Drew McIntyre off guard after Drew McIntyre beat Seth Rollins for the world title. But then McIntyre decided that he wanted to go and push the buttons of CM Punk and let, let CM Punk attacking Drew McIntyre. 
uh, Damien Priest went and cashed in the money to break my bank briefcase, and he is the new WWE World Champion. Now, where is this going to lead? Well, we saw that uh, Drew McIntyre was going to win this past Monday, and here comes CM Punk and causes Drew McIntyre the number one contention spot. Where is this going to lead? We don't know, but we all know that we're going to see a little feud between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. I mean, the word around is that McIntyre is not signed with WWE. He has not signed a contract with WWE. So it's this match between him and CM uh, Punk, the final match that he's going to happen, then leaves. We don't know. But which is perfectly what we're talking about CM Punk because this leads to our segue to the whole bull, bull crap with the video footage with AEW. But before I start with the AEW situation, let's talk about how WWE all week, last week, WrestleMania week, all they did was talk about AEW. First, they put CM Punk on an interview with Ariel Hawani, which I put a video about that on Wednesday. And they he pretty much talked about the whole Jack Perry situation. I felt like... This was like a setup. I think WWE did this on purpose to get some type of reaction out of Tony Khan. And of course, we saw Tony Khan react and whatnot. But WWE all week long was taking shots at AEW. My question is why? They even brought Josh Barnett to ask questions about AEW. Ariel Hawani must have had his balls tickled because this man was always questioning a guest and talking about AEW. The only one who spoke highly about AEW was Cody Rhodes when he said he was proud of what the guys, the Young Bucks, Kenny Omega and them did to bring AEW. But then Triple H gets in some podcast and he takes a shot at Will Ospreay. Now, people talking about, oh, he didn't mention by name uh, Will Ospreay being a little bitch, blah, blah, blah. You, he was talking about Will Ospreay. And how whatever Will Ospreay did outside of WWE doesn't count. That's not a smart move if you're trying to bring in Japanese wrestlers into WWE. So what you're saying is whatever you did outside of WWE does not count. Meanwhile, Triple H mentioned the word grind. He said that these guys are scared of grind. When Will Ospreay, all he did from, from 2021 all the way to 2023 was go from London to Japan, Japan to London, to the United States. He wrestled everywhere, had matches of the year with Kenny Omega. And you're talking about he doesn't know how to grind? But that goes to show you that Triple H is very, very ignorant, you know? And, but this led off to what was announced on night two of WrestleMania when there was mentioned that Tony Khan was going to actually show the all-in footage of CM Punk attacking Jack Perry or what happened that day. Now, when I first heard this, I was like, why? Why are we still talking about something that happened eight months ago? Why are we still talking about CM Punk when he's no longer the AEW? Right? But then again, I looked at it as WWE being petty and childish, egging another company to react, to respond to what they were doing. Okay? And Tony, Tony Khan, of course, like a little child of himself, like him, he's a child, really, fell for it. And when on Wednesday, showed the footage of CM Punk attacking Jack Perry. Now, CM Punk lied. We all know he lied because he said he didn't, he didn't hit nobody. Well, we, clearly we saw him push Jack Perry twice and then did some, grabbed him by the hair and threw him on the floor and took a swipe at him. Now, as far as Tony Khan saying that he feared for his life, I mean, it looked like CM Punk went after him. Now, did he take a swipe at him? You really can't tell because that camera angle. Now, if Tony Khan was smart, he should have done the camera angle from where he was sitting at and shows, you know, CM Punk uh, uh, going up to Jack Perry and then after the whole aftermath, whatever, and then went and swiped and he had swiped him, then we could say, okay, he he had the right to feel it for his life. But all this does is just add more fuel to the fire. And 
it just adds a stupidity because I mean, honestly, I said this was this was dumb. Showing this and then to use it for angle with FTR made it more stupid because nobody reacted at that Okada beat some jobber on Wednesday and called out Pac and Pac came in and then the Young Bucks came in and attacked Pac and then the FTR came in and they all started the fans started trying to CM Punk. That didn't work. That's this show. This show this Wednesday was horrible, but yet gained 819 viewers. But it wasn't because of the show. It was the fact that, okay, it was the fact that they were going to show that video footage. That's why. And I and, and you you don't believe me, we could prove that next week when it's a go home show for the dynasty show. And I can guarantee you they won't hit the 800 mark. You know, but this is stupid. Again, the whole show was horrible. The whole Tony Storm toasting to Thunder Rosa then to attack them and then smear her, 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 her makeup. Okay. The whole Chris Jericho we on the Chris Jericho doing the same storyline again, trying to mentor a young uh, hook. And but we, we know he's going back to heel again. Why? Don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? Will Osprey taking a shot at, at Triple H. You know why? I was all for it. People was like, oh, he was our childish. Triple H started. He answered it. Now, reports came out there with th uh, on Thursday saying that the Young Bucks were not with uh in the case from Wade Keller, that the Young Bucks were not, you know, was not, uh, you know, happy or they were not for the showing of the footage. And this is from, it came from Wade Keller. Also, the, the whole Will Osprey grind thing, grinding thing is grinding the, the, the wife or the daughter of the owner was not his idea. Everything went to Tony Khan. But then Sean Ross Sapp said that was a lie, that they did approve, that they were all right with it. So, but at the end of the day, it still falls on the Tony Khan. Tony Khan makes the last call. So the whole thing is, I mean, is this going to just, it's bad enough that AEW is just, the more they're around, the more is they hate. And you got stupid people, trolls, people who just don't make no sense. I mean, I, I try not to react to the stupid comments online because it just it goes to show you that the uh, the the you know the, the the toxic and whatnot. You know, I mean, I have people getting into arguing with me about all, oh, but AEW be taking shot at WWE. That is a lie. The majority of the time is WWE taking shots or doing something stupid. Since day one, WWE is always trying to uh, 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 do something shady against AEW. Since day one. They claim that they they that they the AEW is responsible for getting them kicked out on, on Wednesday night. They were getting the ass kicked on Wednesday night. Okay. When AEW decided they were gonna do Wednesday nights, what did WWE do? They took NXT out of uh, out of the WWE network and put it on USA network to compete against them. And they lost almost every week. Okay. And it's supposed to show you that they are petty. They'll do any. They, they've been going after the AEW for the, since day one. Triple H has been going after AEW. And remember, uh, um, 2019 on Hall of Fame when Billy Gunn was part of the Hall of Fame induction with DX, and he said, "Well, the T-shirt company." Now all of a sudden, WrestleMania week, we have them attacking AEW all week long instead of concentrating on WrestleMania week. This is what they were doing. Okay. But like I said, before I leave, everybody's talking about this is the, the Paul Levesque area, the Triple H era. Well, enjoy it while you can. Because what's going to happen is that you better hope to God. You better find the nearest church and pray to God that Triple H doesn't get this subpoena. Okay. Because remember, there is a report going going around viral online that Triple H try to has an NDA on a diva. I keep forgetting her name. I gotta find her name. On two thousand and I think two thousand six or two thousand seven, the girl wrestled from two thousand five to two thousand seven, and then he put an NDA on her. Okay, do not be surprised if that comes up now. Because they, everybody's just jumping for joy. Oh, the Triple H never, the Renaissance era, and whatnot. Even even Stephanie McMahon came out 
a couple on WrestleMania night two. Okay. And now they're going to do the draft again. So, you know what? Enjoy what you can and find your nearest church and pray to God that this man does not get subpoena of the Viz McMahon situation. Viz McMahon, I know for his little trainer, was talking about is it that, that it was sad that Viz McMahon wasn't able to even go to a WrestleMania. Dude, dude nobody cares. Nobody has petty for you. Nobody got nothing. They don't care. You did you were an animal. You did a lot of bad things. And now you told me you want petty from people? Come on. Are you serious? But anyway, that is it for me today, guys. And um again, my my uh, my uh feedback on this whole all in shit. I hope this is over with. Apparently not, because Jack Perry came out on Windy City Riot on New Japan on Friday night and came out with a jacket. Actually, he came out with a Chicago, uh, the Chicago uh, state flag or the Chicago city flag. And then behind his jacket says, cry me a river. They are still taking shots at CM Punk. It's like it's not going to end. It's not going to end. But again, and there's one thing I'm going to say before I leave. Isn't it funny that when it comes to CM Punk, it's never his fault. In 2014, he got fired. He blamed everybody else. He even sued the company. Okay. Went to Coca Bennett's um, podcast. And if you don't believe me, just look for Coca Bennett's podcast on 2014. And he blamed everything on WWE. And here we are again, 10 years later. He is still blaming AEW for everything that happened. But we show to prove that he has a bad temper. This is not something you do at work. No, no, no employee will put up with that. But this is pro wrestling. It's oh, he never does nothing wrong. Crazy, isn't it? But anyway, that is it for me today, guys. If you guys want to follow me, follow me on uh, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, check out my podcast store. The TCWR dot very ink depressive dot com. Uh, so check out that uh, and check out the t shirts, the hats, the sweaters, and whatnot. Also, check out my TikTok. I put little stories there here and there once in a while. So, you know, uh, you know, and follow me on Instagram. Uh, I put up a couple of videos during WrestleMania week because I already had did a podcast, so I'm not trying to do all that and do double podcasts and whatever. So um, so again, subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That is a must. It's a please subscribe. I want to thank all the subscribers. We're trying to get to 500. We are 339 right now, and we're going to try to go for 400. But it, try, the main goal is 500 right now. For now, 500 subscribers. Hit that thumbs up. It will help the channel greatly. So till then, guys, that is it for me today, and I hope. That you enjoyed this. Let me know what you think of the, uh, about this video. Give me your your comments on the bottom of this video, and we will definitely respond back. Until then, guys, be safe, and I'll see you next week.